Welcome to the Tommy Sandu podcast with Shin from DCS, big time legend in the Bhangra game and very much a proud British Bhangra artist. What's going on? Where is the Bhangra scene? Where was it? This guy represents 30 years of music, of being in the scene and being an authentic artist in the scene. That means he didn't jump on different bandwagons and trends and sounds. He kept it traditional. He kept true to himself. He's very passionate about where the music scene is right now, where it's going. Uh, And we had a good old chat, not only about music, but also about fatherhood and how much noise he makes in that house. Uh, This is the brilliant Shin from DCS on the Tommy Sandu podcast. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, look at that. Oh, we start we start with music. Is that, look, you can't just stop, you just can't stop playing music for one minute, can you? you well, you, you, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> My bike goes with you wherever I go. <laughs> See, it's funny. I have it on all, all the time as well. Is it literally, is music on all the time in your house? Is it just is it a noisy music house? It is on or I'm playing something because I've got instruments in virtually every room in the house. Right. So, so uh, either I'm playing it or someone else in the house is playing it, there's always something going on. So it, do you not, did you not ever get like people around you, I don't know, missus's kids, parents when you were younger, just kind of going, oh, shin, jump, put your bus, you know, like, <laughs> just stop, man. No, no, no. They, they've never said that directly to my face. <laughs> they may be saying it behind closed doors, and I wish you'd shut up for a bit, you know? Yeah. Uh, because, because when I do my practice in my, pra- I'm in my practice room at the moment, in my studio, yeah? So when I'm in here, obviously my walls aren't soundproof. So the sound goes all around the house, right? So uh, that they can hear me when I'm practicing. I'll, and I start practicing about seven in the morning, uh, morning reals. And then, and then in the evening, I'm here again. You know, so I'm just, uh, you know, m- m- making a load of noise for them. Uh, no. But and I'm sure it disturbs them, but they don't mind. You know, I think they've got a they've got, they've got used to it over the years. I, I love it. There's, no, no, that's two different things, Shin. They don't mind, and I'm sure they've got used to it. <laughs> two different things. You can't well, think they yeah. <laughs> They have to tolerate it, basically. Right, okay. <laughs> look, you're like, listen, I'm the dad now. I'm, I'm running this household. I, I, I'm a, <laughs> let me have my let me just make my noise if I can do nothing else. Yeah. And I, I'm look at and look at that. Sorry, I got to say, you said you're in the studio. Um, look at them. All them wonderful discs and plaques all around yeah. behind you. Uh, oh, sorry. Are they um? What are they? Are they digital downloads on the wall? What is that? Is that far? I don't understand what that that big shiny record looking thing is. There be kids that well, don't know what that is. Yeah, right. Well, these are discs that uh, we we were given by record companies uh, mm. over the years for songs and albums that we've released, and um, it, you get them if you're if you, if you have a hit song or if your song becomes really popular or you sell a certain amount of records and stuff. And a few of them are also given to us at like award ceremonies uh, for popular songs or best bands, yeah. stuff like that. Look at that, but yeah. Shin, man. I mean, when when you look, when I look at that wall, and I'm looking at you now. This, you know, and for, you guys, saying, I know your face is just your face, the one that you wake up to and start making noises and sounds with. But to me, it's you know, it's it's representative of so much. Obviously, you know, I, yeah. I, I see it on music videos, uh, you know, at events, you know, and the songs, and over the years. Do you, I don't know. Do you ever sort of stop and get a little bit nostalgic, or do you, are you just are you one of those that no, don't don't take the moment out to look back. Just keep looking forward. Just keep cracking on. No, 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 no. I, I'm I'm a very nostalgic guy uh, because it's just because I listen to a lot of music and a lot of the music I listen to is stuff from way back. So it, my nostalgia always takes me back to listen, to, and it's my past that always influences me to do something in the future and to keep me going. It keeps me going. And that's where yeah. I get my influences from. It's from my past, musically. Yeah. I'm always listening to stuff that's been recorded by other artists that probably we've even done, which will inspire me again to do a new track or, or just keep me going or something I want to practice on my harmonium, you know. So the past, is, I think the past is very important for people because if you don't have a past, you can't have a future, really. You know, no, so I, always, I agree. always look back as well as looking forwards. And often, as as we see with music, fashion, art, anything, anything creative, even food, I suppose, it goes yeah. around in circles and it kind of molds and evolves and takes a bit from the past and goes a bit to the future. So it's just, well, but then where are things at right now? Where, where you know, when you, okay, it's just funny that I'm talking to you today. And yesterday I spoke to Noopster, um, uh, Manj Music and um, Nindy's uh, boy, 
who's 15 Rock. years old, starting out doing, you know, his hip hop Punjabi sort, not really slightly Punjabi influence, but really just hip hop stuff. But you know, he's got his guti and his Punjabi and his look and seeking yeah. his look. So, and I'm like, man, that wouldn't happen in your day, or you know, or maybe not, not. And and he's got aspirations of, you know, I'm gonna make the mainstream. And I'm like, yeah, that wouldn't happen 30 years ago when you were kicking off. Like, what's going on now then? Well, you know, I, I think where Bangra is, it, it's always been in a good place, right? Bangra music always, has always found it, has always found a way through all the, all, all, all of what all the SHIT that's going on around it. Yeah, yeah and trends and, and it's always found a way through. It's always come out the other side flag flying right for bangra music uh what kids are doing it i just got you know i don't identify with a lot of it but it's good i can tell when I'm, i can tell when i'm hearing good music and when it's and when when music is done well it appeals it just appeals to you right uh there is a lot of bad music out there you know bangra uh is struggling at the moment you know uh because there's just so much repetitive stuff that's going on uh and uk bangra in particular has lost its way completely right it's kind of it's kind of drowning, you know, uh, and someone has pulled the plug out of the bath uh, and we need to get that plug in there and fill it up again. You know what I mean? Uh, what, what, a lot what's of this new talent needs to step up and come out and come come forwards. Right. And but, I'm so, sure so, there's a lot of talent, talent out there. Break, break that down for me because <clears throat> I don't know the industry. I don't know the inner kind of nuances, I suppose, of what's going on. So, because I hear things like, I don't know, let's just say, and I, and I dip in and out of Bangra, like I dip in and out of Bollywood, like I dip in and out of hip hop in between school runs and cooking and tidying the house and all the other stuff you got to do just yeah. being a person um so what what what's gone wrong what why is that when you say the plug's been pulled out what what time because i hear like sudu muswala i know it's, he's not british bungra but like I hear, I, I hear hip-hop and and things coming through in bungra and i hear bungra songs being used in bollywood soundtracks and that and i thought oh maybe bungra's in a good good place but what's what, what do you mean? What's going on with the UK scene in that well, way? You know, what is, the, the UK doesn't really have a scene anymore, right? When I say scene, this, the scene that I saw back in the day when, when we had live bands here, right? When live bands were prevalent on the Bangra scene, we were, making, we were making great music. We were making music that had an identity to it, right? You were around at that time. There was a, there was a massive movement in the UK. Bangra just moved, not only the UK, it moved virtually every country in the world, it became a monster. The Bangra of UK, the, the British Bangra, the, the one that I fly the flag for, I'm British born, I'm a British born Punjabi person. And the Bangra music that we produced in this country influenced everybody all over the world and the kind of Bangra that they were producing, right? And the, the identity that we had and our music had was very unique at that time and very original, you know? and now we don't have that anymore we don't have that creative element in the uk anymore you know which is a big shame it's been, people like me right my 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 age group of artists we've moved on we're getting older right we've moved on to other kind of things you know i i'm not a spring chicken anymore anybody with eyes can see right and i don't hide the fact i've never hidden the fact that i'm i'm no spring and as I'm maturing, my music is maturing, my taste is maturing, the kind of music I want to produce is maturing, right? But that's not the music of the kids today. So the kids need to step up and, 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 and create a scene again in this country. There's not enough passion here anymore for the music, which is what I see, you know? I, I still perform, I still do gigs, right? I don't see people dancing the way that they used to dance before. They're losing touch with the true identity of Bangra music, what Bangra music really represents in this country, you know, what it has always represented, you know, nobody knows the Bangra moves anymore. I don't see them unless, unless they're actually learning, going to a Bangra uh, class and learning how to dance. When I, when I sing a song, a Bangra song, a lot of my songs are very high energy songs, right? We speed up, we slow down, we speed up. And by the end of a song, kids are, kids are gasping for breath. You know what I mean? <laughs> they don't have the energy anymore. They don't have the passion. And, you know, I just go with the, Okay, I love hip hop music, and hip hop has infiltrated Bangra music. It's coming to Bangra music, and Bangra has it's kind of taken Bangra has kind of taken it on, right? But the kind of the songs, most of them are quite good. But as as regards the dance side of things, right, that whole energy side of things, it seems to have got lost along the way. There seems to the purity of Bangra music is is, is getting lost. Even it, it wasn't there, but, but well, it was there before us. We we kind of infiltrated it with our own roots. We, uh, DCS was a British-born Bangra band, right? 
all, most all the guys virtually were in the band were born here in the UK. So the kind yeah. of music that we produced was a fusion of the, 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 the Punjabi music that I heard my parents listening to and the Western influences that we grew up with. And that's a great thing to fuse it together. And we produced a unique sound, you know, that, that just kicked it all over the world. And at the moment, I find the, the, the music sounds great, but the kind of lyrics that are going on in the music and the kind of videos that we're seeing uh, are kind of losing their track a little bit. A lot of it seems to be influenced from back home in India, right? And uh, it seems to me the kind of music that they're producing, they just want to drop their roots big time. They don't, they don't want to be associated with anything. Yeah. Punjabi yeah. or Asian anymore. They just want to be totally Western, you know? So they've got the big cars, uh, you know, and they've got the guns out, which what have guns got to do with Punjabi culture? You know, as far as I know, Punjabi culture has always been about having a good time. It's about family. It's about friends and it's about rejoicing and, and being happy, you know, and yeah. I don't know where the guns came into it, you know, and it does, that kind of stuff doesn't sit well with me because the message that kind of stuff gives is it, it's not right. It's not right for anybody around the world. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think what I've seen, I'm, as you're just saying this now, Punjabis are, are big, right? We're big in our personality. We're big in the noise yeah. we make. We're big in the food portions. We're big in the everything to excess. <laughs> it's probably why a lot of Punjabis are, are successful because we don't just want, oh, I'll just pay my bills and I'll get through. No, I want to smash the game. I want to dominate yeah. the game. And everything is big. And, and yeah. I think that's a good thing. That's an aspirational thing. And that's why it lends itself to hip hop because the hip hop culture is because hip hop stars want to be big. They want to kind of big. dominate. Oh, the same thing, champagne. <clears throat> diamonds, jewellery, all that kind of thing. But somewhere along the line, it's picked up the negative sides of hip-hop, which I think I'm sure hip-hop wants to shake off, which is, you know, the kind of gangstery element. And like, yeah, yeah, I'm so big, I'm so bad. No, you, you don't have to be bad. You can be lovely. You know, you've sung a lot about, you know, having your Punjabi dill and having a big heart, hearted spirit. And that that's part yeah. of our kind of our culture as well. And, yeah. and, I, and I just, I, I wonder whether that evolution though, I wonder whether the youngsters are going to listen to us now and go, uh, look, you, you boys are old. You just don't know what you're chatting about. This, this is where it's at. Because you can't force them to embrace their culture. They're either going to feel it or not. When I, I used to love at parties and weddings and stuff when I'd hear the band just warming up and the little budgers going and the ding, 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 ding. Yeah. And they just, that sound check would excite me. And you'd hear like, -ding -ding -ding, and you're, oh, and, and then they'd stop. You go, Whoa! <laughs> it'd be like a little starter to, you know, like to the actual yeah. main event. I love that. But yeah. I don't know whether anyone gets off on that and, and no one told me no one said hey Potter, you know you must embrace this part of your music that just did something for me do, do, do you know what tommy i bet you if a group of young lads right teenagers came forwards and they were all musicians right and you had a nice handsome looking young lead man like i was back in the day hey. yeah man right <laughs> right and they were all playing live music and they were recording live songs right and it would kick off. It would happen again. It, it can happen again. You know, that movement can, that, that, that can still go on. There's still a lot of live music in the mainstream. There's a lot of live bands who are still playing, going out there, making songs and fresh bands coming up all the time. But it just seems to be that in this country, kids seem to have lost the passion to want to learn an instrument. Do you know, yeah. they've been diverted off into some next, I don't know what they're interested in, tell you the truth, Ajikal. But isn't that because of the quick fix nature of, of human probably the board now it's like well why learn an instrument when you can pick a program and sample of this and da, da, da. and therefore it's all yeah. got so much more you know I, I look at my kid he's like he's in his ipad they can they lose himself facebook the metaverse everyone's losing themselves to this other dimension and they're not yeah here. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you're right it, it's a very quick fix everybody wants to have what they want and they want it now straight away right they want to press a button and there it is right in front of them right they don't want to work hard i mean i i I've been sing, practicing singing all my life. I, I still do it now. I did it this morning and I'm going to do it again tonight, right? Every day of the week, I'm singing all the time, right? Kids don't want to spend that much time to become a good singer anymore. You know, it, it, they're either born with it or they don't want to, they don't, they don't want to work at it anymore, you know? And that yeah. is a shame. You know, that, that is a very big shame. And, and I, 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 I don't see the scene really happening again in this. I mean, when we had the scene back in the day, you know, the kind of gigs that used to go on and i don't i don't what they what they the way that they're going the path that they're going down i don't see that kind of scene ever happening again in this country you know no, we, you're right. we, we used to do gigs up and down 
the country, different cities in clubs. And we get like 50, 60 coaches full of students converging on one venue, right? Say in Nottingham or at MGM, you'd get 50 coaches coming down from as far as Scotland, from down Gravesend, coming up into Nottingham. And you'd have a massive scene. It would be beautiful. It would be fantastic. And I would love to see that happen again in this country. Now, I, I do really pity the kids of today who have not experienced that, who've not come through that, that oneness that was felt by, you got three or 4,000 kids in one room, right? Dancing to one band. And they, they, they're sharing a whole culture. They, they're, they're sharing a whole scene. They're sharing a whole movement. They're, sh they're sharing a whole emotion together. They're going mm. through something together. And it created a whole scene, not just around the UK, like I said, around the whole world it connected. You know, and Do you not I would love my kids to see that again. Yeah, but do you, do you not think in that way? Now, you again, I'm just thinking this off the top of my head. Is the world's become more divisive in general? Like, I when you say back to the 90s, I remember the what I loved about the 90s, I've said this before, is um, Bhangra, British, the British Asian scene, whatever you want to call it, that fusion sound was all growing. You know, Brit pop, Oasis, Blurs, and all that. Yeah, how yeah. garage, RB, hip hop, the, it was there was more. There was more just going on. And now things are just more segregated. I know there's more tension. There's more, oh, he's this and we're that. And they're from this country and da, da, da. They have these beliefs and values. It's like that that universal love, and that kind of almost hippified, if you want to call it love, of the 90s, <laughs> 80s, 90s, you know, where there was a celebration of good times. You know, and I yeah. remember even like, you know, people in slightly older than me, my sisters, you know, that kind of, not generation, but a little bit older. They go out in the, you know, the 80s and 90s. And there was, you know, there'd be black, white, brown partying together to, you know, yeah. music. Now, I don't know, the whole world's splitting up. Don't you feel that? that yeah, is, I do feel that. I do feel that. And that, that, and that, that is being reflected, I think, in the kind of music that's being produced, like we talked about earlier on. You know, it's about gangsters and guns and, and it's the wrong kind of element and the wrong kind of thinking coming into the music, which is, it's just giving the wrong kind of feel, the wrong kind of emotions are coming into the whole, the whole scene. And it, it seems to be splitting it up. It seems to be making it a little eerie, you know, a little scary. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know if kids are comfortable going out to gigs, but you, you just generally hear, I, I, don't, I, just, I don't know if it's got anything to do with the whole climate around the world at the moment, you know, because everything does affect the kind of music that's being produced. Uh, you know, people are, are w coming out of COVID and everything. People have gone through a really rough patch, gone through a hard time. So people are not in a good place at the moment. The world is not generally in a good place. And that seems to be reflected by the kind of music that's being produced. I don't know, you know, and the kind of vibe that's coming off that music. So, you know, it's, it's all a big psychological thing, you know, which <laughs> you can analyse. But uh, will you will you really get any answers out of it? You know, if you try, you, sometimes you just can't analyse anything. And it no. just has to happen through a natural cause. And, and it just takes effect. I was just going to say that. I say so it's right because nobody, no, there was no master plan record label. Well, the, the probably wasn't to some of the pop scene, but uh, Spice Girls. But I'm saying, but for like, you know, for your Brit pop scene or even rock and roll and and yourselves, that came from musicians. That came from, let's say, I'm just talking about people like. Uh, Oasis uh, that came from the Manchester scene, just being yeah. something. And I'm sure Manchester, for example, let's use them now as an example. We'll probably go, man. The glory days of Manchester music aren't there anymore. You know, we we were something. We were a powerhouse of music. And even if you look at British music now across the scene, Adele, Ed Sheeran, uh, you know, th they're known around the world. Even the Harry Styles and all those guys who are, you know, do Brit the British influence on music globally is still strong, successful, still strong. But yeah, yeah. But that won't last forever, and it will move and, and it'll ebb and flow. And people from the sixties will will go, oh, those Beatles and Rolling Stones days—they're gone. No one will ever experience that again. Isn't that? Sh should we not? I'm just thinking now because I'm trying to almost come to peace with it. I don't want to be annoyed at this. I don't want to be annoyed listening to this podcast if I was someone and kind of going, <laughs> oh man, it's all gone. It's all gone to crap. It's all gone down the drain. <laughs> so you know, we're, we, what's the bloody point? Let's forget about it. But I think it's um. I think I want to say is there, there is an evolution to it and things can come about, but they have to come about naturally, like you said. Naturally, that, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so we, we need those stars. Pot. It's not all gone to pot. There's still a lot that can happen out there. There's still a lot to go on, you know, and we, we're still uh, very aspirational as to what we can do, you know, and what, what, where we can take the scene and what, what can really happen in this scene, you know. And 
I, I just I just think kids need to step up and you know get back into the live music scene. You know, like I said before, it's very healthy in the mainstream side of things, right? The live scene is still there, and we just need to get. We I, I don't know how we can do it, but we need to motivate some kids to get back onto the live scene, you know, and um, make some bands again. Right, absolutely. And, and you can do something. I remember the BBC used to do a song competition back in the day that used to right. really help motivate yeah. the kids and you know get stuff happening it's organizations like the bbc that need to kind of help step up and then you know get people like us involved to come and help uh, you know and influence kids to come forward you know create new talent create new platforms right. for them to perform on i i agree i think i, I and again i think it's kind of i talk about look see do all the time if you look at it and you see it you, you want to do it and if you see yeah. it out there happening you kind of go all right I'd like to be a part of that. I mean, any when I saw a DJ perform and and the bass line dropped and the crowd roared and I didn't get it. I looked yeah. and I was like, "What's everyone roaring at? Like, who's just walked in or what?" And they went, "No, the bass, the bass had dropped." And I was like, <laughs> "I want to do that. I want to be yeah, the yeah. guy that makes everybody roar." So yeah. you know, I think you see it and, and you, it's something either connects or not. And therefore, I, I, you're right. It's just got to kind of it, people need to see it and need to click and it, for it to happen. But but on yeah. that live scene note, I was going to say. You still, you sound like you know, and I know you still have got that buzz for live. When you, when I mean, you, I saw on your Instagram thing recently as well. You, you guys were performing. You said, "Great to have all the guys back having yeah. a jamming session." Has that, has that feeling ever dampened over the years? You're like, oh, here we go. You know, like, or is it, is it exciting every time? It's exciting every time. Yeah, without a doubt. I wouldn't think of it twice. You know, it, I mean, even we're rehearsing next week again. You know, and we, we just get together and. We're in the room. As soon as we start playing together, it's it's just magic, you know. You, you start getting goosebumps when yeah. when you get certain parts of songs, or we're working on something, and suddenly we'll do something creative. You know, we're going up, off in some next direction, and it's just an amazing feeling to have as a musician when you play with guys. I mean, I've been playing with these guys for this this lineup of DCS has been together for about fifteen years now, right? And we know what each other is thinking. Just by looking at one another, you know, and we can just by hearing the person and what he's doing, we know what's got, where we're going to go with this song now, you know, and it's amazing because we're, we're always improvising our own songs all the time. We're always changing them to keep them fresh, just to keep, you know, to keep ourselves on our toes all the time, you know, and there's nothing like it. You know, if you're into that kind of stuff, there is nothing like the buzz of improvising on live music, you know, it's fantastic. And I, I love doing it every time I'm, I'm with the band. There's no, and you know, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. DCS is one band that has always been, at the, we've always tried to be at the front of our game in the way that we played, the way that we've performed and the whole energy that we bring to our, our performances, you know, and, uh, but, but that's because all the guys are into it and we're all on the same wavelength. So on that note, I, I think about this a lot because I, I look at up and coming presenters, for example, and I, I come from the performance era. I was I was on Blind Date. I was, you know, yeah. I, I was friends with Scylla Black, you know, th those kind of things. And Scylla gave me loads of little nuggets of information about entertainment and we hung out quite a lot. So yeah. now I, I, I did performing arts. I did dr dance, music and drama. I did flamenco okay. for two years, you know, like at 16 years old. Wow. I was like a brown Billy Elliot, you know, like in my <laughs> world, you know. But actually my dad encouraged it. So you're right, you know, you do need the elders to get behind it as well. But but that entertainment thing, like you said, you've got that thing. You said, we all connect. We all want to give something. Nobody taught you that. That's, no. that's in you. That's in us, yeah. That's in us. We're, we're, we're inherently born. You, you, like I said, an artist, artists have to be born, right? You, you're born with this thing inside you that you, there's this energy that you're born with inside you that just wants to get out. You know, you, you become very frustrated if you can't perform. This is another reason why I practice every day on my home because if I did not sing at home, I, I'd probably be. I'd probably kill some. Well, you know, I wouldn't actually go out and kill somebody, no. right? But I'd be, I'd be strangling people yeah. around the house, or you know, I'd be out there punching people in the face or something. You know, I'd be doing something that I shouldn't be doing because there's an energy inside me that like, you can probably feel it now. You know, it's as soon as I start talking about the subject, it just kind of winds up inside me and wants to get out. But I think you've touched on something there because I, when I see men maybe boozing or doing drugs or cheating or particularly men i'm going to focus on men because i can relate with yeah. that as a bloke right when i see all that going on i think they just haven't found their thing 
That's all these bande that think it's about money or whatever. They just they they need to think like your thing is clearly music. You got your outlet. Mine is performing. I realized quite early on. Yeah. If I'm not talking to people on stage, chatting. This is this talking thing is my thing. That I realize yeah. that I do it everywhere I go, and when I'm not on a platform i'll do it to people at the train station at the tills the <laughs> missus and miss goes god how much time of a day do you waste talking to randomers and i'm like yeah. I, I can't explain I, I just have to do it that is yeah. my thing so um i i want guy i want everyone to find their thing i want everyone to find their yeah. outlet i think it's and blokes won't do that blokes will think you know i graft i make my money i get smashed on the weekend and i'm like oh you're just you're kind of suppressing something then. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. No, no I, I agree with you, buddy. I agree with you. You know, everybody, I believe everybody is born with a talent, right? Whether they find that talent and link, catch on to it and nurture it, you know, it, it's, you've got, you've got to be, very, you're a very lucky person if you've caught onto your talent and been able to nurture it and then go on like yourself you know, to make a, a career out of it. You know, you're a very lucky person and you're a, you're a very happy and satisfied person in this world, you know. Uh, but if you're that, if you're, like you say, the other guy who has never been able to quite find his talent, who's always got, who's always never quite happy, you know, and always trying to find a way to be happy, that's because he has not tapped into his own talent. He does not know what his own talent is and he needs to find it some way or yeah. another. And actually, on that note, I saw you. Um, <clears throat> as we're talking about men, I saw you put up a, a post a little while ago, quite a while, quite a while ago. I think when was Father's Day? That was a few months ago now. When you oh, said yeah. about yeah, and about and and I tell you why I like that because I thought it, I always feel a bit selfish, kind of going, "Hey, man, what about the guys?" Because obviously, this isn't the guys' time in a way. We know it's it's Me Too movement. It, you know, we're looking at how the injustices of. Um, women in relationships and how men have dominated the world and they have dominated the world and they have kept that power to themselves and particularly Asian men will control the maybe the purse strings of the house or who can do what and yeah. trust me that's not how my house runs I, I, I <laughs> my, my, my missus runs Neither things <laughs> right. but, but it's uh, in that respect I, I, I quite like when you said you know take a little moment out for, for dads and and it just told me in that little video post that you did is that you know, you and I know this will be true of you because you're an artist that you're an emotional guy and you're saying, Tell your dad that you love him, tell say it. Yeah, because what what was what was your just want to know your thinking behind that and just want to hear it from you as to kind of why that's important to do. You know, okay, I'll tell you why. Uh, I lost my dad about 15 years ago, right? And my dad was quite old school, right? And we were brought up never to question my dad, right? And uh, because we never questioned him, I respected him because he was the head of the family, but I never got as close to him as I wanted to get to him, right? And I, 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 I loved him dearly. And when we lost him, we lost him quite suddenly, right? To a heart attack. And I, I, I all of a sudden realized that I never got the chance to tell him that I, how much I really loved him and how much I really cared for him. And now he's gone, I'll never be able to tell him, right? And that's why, you know, I, I, I'm always telling my kids how much I, I feel for them and how much I love them. And then it comes back to me. Right. Because obviously I'm from a, a my, my dad was from an older generation, an older school of thinking. We're from a newer school of thinking. Right. So I connect with my children. And that's why I, I you know, I, I, I always try and spread the message out there, you know dads can be quite standoff characters you know and we're very tough and we have to have this strong exterior you know to, to kind of show everybody that you know, you know we're as hard as rock and you know, daddy will control the situation get you through anything that you're in right no problems if dad's around right but he's just a person at the end of the day and he's as vulnerable as anybody else right he may put on this exterior but he still needs you to tell him that you do love him and that you do appreciate him being around and doing what he does for you you know, even though he may come across with a dundai every time, you know, as my dad, not all the time, but I, I felt his belt a few times back in the day. But I respect him for that, you know, because he kept me on the straight and narrow. And that's how yeah. things were in those days, you know. There were, there were parents back in the day were very hands on. I just got, you know, it's, you think twice before you lay your hands on, uh, on your kids. But, you know, that's where we are. That's where the world is now, you know. But yeah. uh, that, that, that's why I say. It's they're, they're people, they're person, you know, and and they love you 
love them back. Just say it to them, you know, say it to them, please. Oh man, that's beautiful. Listen, I, I, and I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap on that one because I think that's lovely. I think you're right, and and you, I think you show the love in your music. You show the love in everything you do. You know, I think a lot of artists are kind of outward facing, like their their hearts on the outside, and you can see yeah. it in the way you're talking about everything from your you know, the Punjabi Bhangra scene and Br British Bhangra scene to to fatherhood and and to the music. So, just listen. I, I just wanted to get you on because I I, I respect what you've done. I know that there have been sessions and practices and band practice and vocal training and what we see you know with a with a big song on the stage or whatever it is there's so much more behind that and oh yeah and, and that graft i just wanted to just just celebrate for a moment so thank you uh keep going keep making noise we we thank will you. I, I, I got a feeling we're gonna something's coming. I got a feeling there's someone in the youngster in the scene and a, something. I just I feel optimistic about it. I really hope so. I pray to God that someone comes along, like I told you, in the UK scene and just brings and lights that fire again. Just yeah. light that fire for me, please. One time. We'll be dancing. Whoever that kid is, if you're <laughs> out there, he or she, Shin and Tommy Sandy will be there, front row, bopping away. Definitely. Uh, Listen, big yourself up and thank you for making the time for us, man. Appreciate you. Tommy, thank you very much. Love and respect, Good. bro. No. Hey, before you go, have you hit subscribe to the podcast yet? Have you done that? You should. Have you also started following the Tommy Sandu podcast on social media? That's on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook as well. Do it! Do it, do it, do it. Because then, you know when those annoying little notifications pop up with the random stuff that you've agreed to let into your life? Okay, delete those. Let some Tommy Sandu joy in. You know I'm going to be talking to the good people. You know I'm going to be having some fun chats. Why not have those on a daily basis and get the notifications as well? All you got to do is hit subscribe and like uh, and follow. And, uh, and it's free. It's free. It's our favorite word. Asians love free. Say it. It's free. Oh, it feels good. Go on, do it now.